undefeated Patriots are preparing for a Thursday night AFC showdown in Foxborough. Historically, Brady has dominated Thursday night football, going a perfect 8-0 in those games. Not to mention, he's been playing like an MVP and keeps getting better. Check this out. In 2007, the Pats were also undefeated through their first six games. But since then, his pass yards per game have increased from 304 to 342. And his touchdown to interception ratio also improving from 21 to 2, now 16 to 1. His QBR has slightly decreased, but still, this might be Brady's best year ever. We asked you guys to answer that on Twitter, and here are your results. Over 60% say yes, wow. it is. And for this conversation, we welcome in Darren Woodson. Good to see you, Thank as you. always. Do you agree with the fans here? Is this Brady's best season ever? Because he's had some pretty good ones. Yo, in the he's past. had some great ones in 2007. You just talked about yeah. it in 07. I don't, I don't know if you can get better than 07. Right. You know, he had Randy Moss on the outside, throws for 50 touchdown passes, 4,860 yards. That was the best, in my opinion, in my time of watching football, was the greatest offense I'd ever seen. I mean, coming to town, they were going to put up points, and you know it. Now you played against Brady. I played once, in once, Foxborough. In, and in, it, which, in which year? Uh, had to be 02. Okay, I got it. Had got to it. be 02 oh. in, in that time. They're Super Bowl years, those yeah. years. Yeah, yeah. and he, they were strong then as well. And, and that's what you like about Brady. Brady has not changed. And we've always tried to discount what he's done in the past. And it seems like, you know, now I'm looking at this, this situation this year. I think this is his greatest work. I honestly do, because in 07, he had guys like Randy Moss on the outside, and he had some playmakers that could make plays for him. Right now, Gronk is the only big name on that offense. Yeah. You talk, you know, Julian Edelman, as much as I love him and what he's doing, that's all good. Danny Amendola, they, these guys, could they play on other? Brandon LaFell, who can't catch a ball half the time on the outside, could they do these, these certain things on other teams? And I, I, don't, I just don't see it. And Brady makes them better. And again, you just go back to 07. Jabbar Gaffney was at that time yeah. probably the only guy who, after he left, had pretty so, so, some did. success in Denver yeah. and in Washington. Other than that, Dante Stallworth fell off the cliff. Yeah. Uh, Randy Moss fell off the cliff. I mean, you, you see so many. Wes Welker, where did he, where, what ended up happening with him? There's so many guys that Brady made better in their, in their time, and this year is no different. Stephen A. I went back and took a peek at the 2007 stats of the New England Patriots when they went undefeated after Spygate uh, ultimately went through the playoffs and lost to the Giants in the Super Bowl because Strahan and the crew were all over him, and he had to tap dance like the late, great Gregory Hines, God rest his soul. But, you know, before that, looking at his numbers, 50 touchdowns, just eight interceptions, QBR of 84, 68% completion percentage, nearly 5,000 yards, 48 and change to be exact. Um, Brady's on pace to throw less than the eight interceptions. I don't know if he's on pace. I don't think he's on pace, rather, to throw 50 touchdowns. No. Nope. Um, but I do believe that the numbers are relatively similar. I don't blame him for having the mindset that he's playing better now than he ever has. I can't definitively blame you nor anybody else if you think that. But it was just something special back then about Brady to Randy Moss to Wes Welker. It was something special. I mean, Lawrence Maroney was your quarterback. Um, but I just looked at it, Skip, and... Running back. In all honesty, yeah, he was yeah. a running back. He was a running back for them. In all honesty, guys, and Molly, yeah. here's why I think back to 2007. It's one moment that I'll never forget about Brady as long as I live. They had Randy Moss on a fly pattern, if I remember correctly, Darren. And they missed it against the Giants in a final regular yeah, yeah. season game. They missed it. The very next play, <laughs> they caught the same play. Oh, yep. And Bob threw it up there. And Brady connected mm -hmm. with Boss for the 50th touchdown. Okay? I just thought that that moment was so special because it was like they were literally saying, yeah, we're going to do what we want to do. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do about it? Boss move. It ju yeah. They just had, this year they seem to be on this mission where it's all about the flake gate and, you know, proving you wrong and all that other stuff. Before, yeah, you had Spygate, 
But remember, that was legitimate. They, they, they could use it as a motivational tool all they wanted to, but what was undeniable was that it was legitimate because it was Spygate. You're spying and you're not supposed to be doing that and, you know, all of this other stuff and Lord knows how many tapes the commissioner's office had and all of this other stuff. But they just went out on the field and said, we're going to show you we're better. That's entirely different than being out there now, being ticked off and basically taking it out on everybody because you have a superior system with superior personnel, a superior coach, et cetera, et cetera. Back in 2007, it was like, we just, we, we're bad boys, and we're going to come out here, and we're going to show you how bad we are. It, it just, it was a different mystique about them back in 2007, and I loved it more than I love this, although I respect both immensely. Okay, did you love it more in 07 because Brady was throwing to a man who caught 23 touchdowns from him named Randy Moss, who was the greatest deep threat in pro football history? Well, that, that, that obviously has something to do with this, Skip, because it, it's the show. It's the show. Like, for example, when I watch M Brady, I, I, I marveled at his performance last week, but it was, it, to me, Skip, you can appreciate this. Darren, you can appreciate this. It was a Kenny Stabler kind of performance to me mm. last week. You know what I mean? Just picking you apart, you know, system, you know, systematically marching you downfield and just making one throw after another and just demoralizing you. In the case of Randy Moss, he was a show in and of himself. But he still, as great as he was, he still wasn't Tom Brady. And it was just something special about watching that team that mm. year. It's beautiful now, but it was really special in 2007. It was some special moments up in there, man. It really was. By the way, Kenny Stabler could throw it to the other team on occasion, <laughs> like a lot of times. But remember, Tom Brady this year has so far 12 touchdowns to one of the, the worst luck I mean, interceptions in the history yeah. of interceptions, where it's basically a catch by Edelman that, that gets yeah. bobbled into an, a pick six. Yeah. Okay, so in 2007 through six games, he had 21 touchdowns. So 21 to two, now he's 16 to one, which should be 16 to zero. I believe going back to this past Super Bowl, Tom Brady has played the greatest quarterback of his career, including the Super Bowl. Is it deflate gate fueled? Yes, it is, I believe, because this guy can be a psycho competitor. And once he decided that these are bogus, trumped up charges aimed at him, not at his head coach, not even at his owner, at him, then he said, okay, NFL, watch this. But he's having to do it now. And let's look at degree of difficulty. And I, I hit Stephen A. with this at the start of the show. I'm not going to read the names again. This is the most no-name, inexperienced yep. offensive line in pro football. Exactly. There's one legit bona fide starter who, who used to be the right tackle who had to move to left tackle. The, the center, the, the, the guts of this, the, the brains and guts, is an undrafted free agent rookie. Okay? Think about that. And the other guys haven't started much at all, and it's just mix and match. I don't know how they protect him at all. He's getting rid of the football faster than any other quarterback in the league. And to your point, we all appreciate Gronkowski, but, but there's no deep threat at all. Right. There's not one guy who can take the top off the defense. Right. There's no stretch player. Well, there's no threat at all. Everything, everything is going to be mostly underneath, right? right. And there's going to be a lot of run after catch with it. Go ahead, Stephen A. Well, well, Skip, I need, I, and this is not so much of debate as it is a question for both you and Darren. Darren, because he's a Super Bowl champion. You, because you've been covering the sport for over 35 years. I will defer to y'all when I ask this question. You just acknowledge that Tom Brady gets rid of the football relatively quickly. And because he's so skilled at doing so, and New England's so skilled at their short, their short precision, precision passing offense, isn't it plausible that when you keep bringing up the offensive line, that dare I say it's not that big of a deal because you can't send the house? 
to Tom Brady because you constantly have to look for the little dip and dunk play here or there. Look at what happened with Rob Gronkowski in that touchdown last year when the Patriots gave up the blitz on the left side from the New York Jets. They didn't even block him because Tom Brady knew that that would leave Rob Gronkowski wide open. It was a play that they had manufactured during the game because they saw what the Jets were doing and they had that kind of switch up going on. I'm saying if 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 you if if you can't send the house at him because he's getting rid of the ball so quickly, then why make such a big deal I, I think about that speaks, the offensive I, line that he's working with? You know, I think that really speaks to his brilliance. I, I really do. I mean, exactly what you just said. It speaks to his brilliance because of this. When you have that open field, and they like to throw the ball, they, they're not going to run the ball consistently. They're going to throw the ball. He, what, he, what, they, they run the ball last time, last week five times. Yeah, they, rushed they the just gave it up. They, yeah. He is finding the, met, the mismatch that he wants to find. And he's seeing the entire defense. So when the defense gets lined up, he's finding. They, he knows what defense they're in. And this is what speaks to the brace as a quarterback. You have to make a quick second decision. That decision has to come in and out. And the ball has to be out of your hands because you know that your offensive line can't protect. Yeah. So find the mismatch, go at that mismatch. Brady has been but, perfection. You just look at everyone else around the league. I looked at Matt Castle last week with my, no. my Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. There's mismatches, but, but there's one on ones, mm -hmm. but, but he can't find a one on one, nor can he pull the trigger to make the but decision. Darren, but Darren, here's what I'm asking you because of the brilliance of Tom Brady, his football IQ, isn't it plausible? that guys are actually scared to rush after oh, him yeah. because you're constantly watching. Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. So th that's what I'm saying. That, but that's what I'm saying when I talk to Skip about the offensive line and why it's not a big deal because you can't come at him the way people would normally come at him because he's so brilliant. You might you don't know when he's setting you up to come at him right. just so he could dip it to somebody else. But That's my point. But, okay, you're right. But, but to Darren's point, it's extremely difficult to see the mismatch yes. pre-snap and execute it but, but, and make the right choice. Because if you guess wrong, if you read wrong, but it's, it's going to be Skip. going the other way like yeah, yeah. Matt Castle but, 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 was. But, but, you know? but, but, but not for him, not for somebody that's been around since 2000 and has played at an elite level for the last 10, 12, 14 years. It's not difficult for him. That's the point. You can't sit up there and go like this. Do you, you see how difficult that is? No, that's not. He knows what he wants to do. They're trying to figure out what Tom Brady is going to do. He is a complete master yes. of his offense in New England. Most quarterbacks are not a master of their offense. So, bottom he line, is. you're saying you are not impressed with Tom Brady, correct? No, I'm not saying that at all. Well, well, you're I'm discounting you, what he's pulled off. No, I'm saying to you, you need to stop bringing up the offensive line because it's really irrelevant when it comes to him. He doesn't Not need an in offensive that system. line. He could do this right. without a line, right? Right. Just, so, they, so they shouldn't even send up. a line out there. But, he should just but, go out there by you himself. You don't really need the, one. You know? <laughs> you yeah. really, you, right. he really doesn't uh, need uh, one. Dude is so nice. We will leave it at that. I'm so excited for tonight's game. I said this earlier, Darren. More excited to see what the, the Dolphins do against them. And you're sticking with us. Up I'll next, we're talking your Cowboys. we got uh, Cowboys lovers uh, and haters here, here for this go. next one. We've got some news. Dez back on the practice field. But could Joseph Randall be on his way out? We have a big D update on the other side of the break, stay here.